Welcome. Welcome. This is American Zarathustra, and today we have a very special guest, Vincent Bruno of NoahideGate.com. How are you today, Vincent? I'm doing well, thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me today. So NoahideGate.com. Um, let's let's start off by describing to the audience what is Noahide Law. Well, Noahide Law is something that I used to say probably a lot of people had never heard about, but it's actually starting to become quite popular after many years of activism. So the Noahide Laws are laws that come from the Jewish Talmud. And these are laws that apply strictly to non-Jews. So there's Jewish law, there's halakha for Jews, mm. but then there is Noahide law for non-Jews, and it is mandatory and obligatory. We have to follow these laws. Now, I'm going to lay them out. There's seven of them, and people in your audience might at first think that these sound good, particularly some of your Christian listeners, mm -hmm. but um, I want you to after the explanation, it's going to be different. So the seven laws are no idolatry, no blasphemy, mm -hmm. no sexual immorality, no murder, no theft, do not eat the flesh cut from a living animal. And then the most uh, important law is the only positive law. So the other ones were negative laws. They told you what you cannot do. Yeah. The seventh law is a positive law. It tells you what you must do. And you must set up courts of justice to enforce these laws. And the um, the punishment for breaking any of these laws is decapitation. God in heaven. Oh, it's so ugly. So, uh, yeah. So when, uh, I'm listening. I'm curious, when were these laws, when did they start? I mean, this this sounds very, you know, like something that, that maybe would have been normal in the desert 3,000 years ago or something. Well, okay. Okay. There's debate over when they started. So they appear in the Talmud. Some Jews, though not all, there's division and some Jews are more truthful about it. Mm -hmm. But some Jews will try to tell you that they come from the Bible. The reason they're called the Noahide laws comes from Noah. So mm -hmm. if you go back, Noah, everyone else died except for Noah and his three sons in their legends, right? Right. So if supposedly everyone on earth is born of Noah. Noah is the progenitor of everyone. And so supposedly God, their God, gave these seven laws to Noah and they were binding on everyone. And it wasn't till later that the Jews got special laws for them on mm -hmm. Sinai and they became a special people. Mm -hmm. um, but these laws were for the whole world and they're for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just quickly go through why these might not be as good as some of your listeners think though if you're a pagan or if you come from a different kind of perspective you might automatically like as soon as i heard no idolatry i knew that there was something wrong yeah um now idolatry this is the jewish version or jewish definition of I idolatry mm -hmm. and according to judaism the trinity is idolatry to worship jesus as god is yeah. idolatry. Yeah. So Christians are considered idolaters. They are also considered blasphemers mm. because Jesus, bla you know, the Talmud says that Jesus blasphemed on the cross and, uh, you know, to simply disparage or question Judaism. Of course, every other religion can be blasphemed, yeah. but only it's, it's the Jewish religion that can't be blasphemed. Now, sexual immorality, you cannot, no fornication, no adultery, no homosexuality. Um, however, that goes only for non-Jews. So a non-Jewish man or woman, or let's say a non-Jewish man, would be decapitated for invading the marriage of a Jew or a non-Jew. However, if a Jew invades the marriage of a non-Jew, there's no penalty. There's no death penalty. Same thing that goes for murder. A Jew may murder a non-Jew without penalty. Same goes for theft. Uh, a, a Jew may steal from a non-Jew without penalty. The do not eat the flesh cut from a living animal that comes with a few interesting stipulations. Mm -hmm. The one thing is you can't eat lab cloned meat because mm -hmm. they took the cell from a living animal and grew it. So mm -hmm. you're not allowed to do that. And then there would probably be 
different dietary. There's questions about whether Gentiles are allowed to hybridize plants and animals. Like when we get, you know, when we hybridize plums and peaches, will we will we be able to do that? There's questions mm -hmm. over that. And um, of course, the most important law is, you know, setting up these courts of justice everywhere that are supposed to decapitate people who break any of these laws. This is extraordinarily disturbing and sickening, and it is clearly Jewish supremacy. There's no way to hide that. It is just so plainly obvious. Um, there's, there's obviously a lot to, to unpack here. Um, I have read the parts of the Talmud that describe a lot of this, and I strongly urge the viewers to do some research specifically into the Talmud um, on these topics, Noahide Law, it's something that is not nearly talked about enough. And I believe, I'll, I'll essentially say that I've, I've created a, a website, um, csofamerica.weebly.com, that's Constitutional Sanctuaries of America. The concept being to to outlaw Sharia law and, and Noahide law, that the Constitution should be the only and the highest law in the United States, and no other foreign law should be able to take root or be recognized here at all. And so this plays into that really beautifully. It, it helps to educate people what is Noahide and why should it be banned. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful to have you on the show. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just let you continue. <laughs> There's a lot. Well, to say. I mean, you said the Constitution. That's so. Um, um, there's Public Law 102-14. So what happened was there are 12 laws and five proclamations in America which recognize officially recognize the Noahide laws. The way they say that the Noahide laws are the foundation upon which the American nation was founded that it is our responsibility to educate the population about them and that we have and will again sign an international scroll with other heads of state pledging to use education and charity to return the world to the Noahide laws. Now, it's interesting the way these laws are written. They're not necessarily unconstitutional because they don't say right now Noahide law is the law of the land, even though it... Well, they do say that, but they don't say it in law itself. Like there's the law, but then there's the reason for the law, right? So Congress gives the reason why this law is in place. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason that Noahide law is the foundation of America. That does not mean, however, these laws cannot be repealed. Laws that are written the way these laws are written can be repealed for being inaccurate and offensive, which mm -hmm. this is both. Um yeah. But it's interesting that what people say is that, okay, we, the president and the Congress on several instances have said officially the foundation of America is the Noahide law and that Noahide law is the basis and bedrock of civilization. So what people say, you know, or what the argument is that if martial law was ever declared, there's this precedent that, okay, the Constitution is suspended, but the basis of civilization itself is Noahide law. So some people say that if there were a martial law were ever declared that the United States has a precedent for implementing the Noahide laws, they would say, well, the Noahide laws were before the Constitution and the American nation is, is founded upon that. We're, we're revoking the Constitution, but we can't necessarily revoke Noahide law. And then it would become law. That's how people describe it. So as I perceive this, it basically is hiding within a Christian cloak or a sort of a, a sheep's mask, so to speak, where it's, it's trying to kind of Trojan horse Jewish law into American law. And it, would you say that's correct? E yes, it is. They're making, um, they are making inroads. They eventually want to be declared the law. Um, it's been also um, recognized by the United Nations 
And in the United Nations, there's the Institute for Noahide Code, noahide.org. And they say officially that they want the Noahide laws embedded in the constitutions of all the world's nations. So that's where they're going. They are laying the groundwork. So they're getting countries and nations, the Vatican, the United Nations, um, they're pushing it in Australia, they're pushing it in the education system in um, England. But here in America, they are prepping us by getting the Congress and the president to say, yes, these are the foundation of America. So it's it's a it's a step process. It's a process that that they are working on. And just like all other globalist processes or communist processes, it's a slow boil. They move in inches over a long time. It's a civilizational battle. You know, um, this th this is uh, insidious and dark. Um, it's it's interesting how say for example like do not commit adultery or do not steal or kill these are you don't really need a bible to tell you these things you don't need a religion to tell you these things they're very obviously wrong right um but to kind of take these things that are naturally unethical and then say oh well we arbitrarily assign ourselves uh the ability to decapitate people for it is 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 criminal in and of itself in a extreme manner and, and a very twisted way too because people uh, obviously you know america for now is still generally a christian nation and uh, obviously these things are, are changing and we're etc but it's i think very easy to trick christians into accepting this so do you have any thoughts or strategies on in, in terms of how to talk to christians specifically about knowing the difference between you know the evil of noahide law and their own religious rules yes um it's um yes one of the things that they're doing so the 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 prohibition against murder includes abortion um well that's an interesting one because according to Rabbi Schneerson, who I don't, we can get into him, but he's a very famous rabbi involved in the Noahide laws. Um, they do generally say abortion is illegal. So that is a way that they try to get to Christians. They'll say, well, we're both against abortion, though abortion is only illegal for Gentiles, not because it's necessarily immoral, but because the fetus of a Gentile is supposed to be born to serve Jews. And so to kill the fetus of a Gentile is destroying the property of a Jew, where as a Jew may get an abortion and there is no penalty for it because an adult Jew rather than a fetus is the meaning of creation. So it, they say it's not worth decapitating an adult Jew for something subsidiary is what they call it for getting rid of a fetus but if a gentile gets rid of the fetus it it's destroying jewish property but um abortion is the way that they try to get people on your side homosexuality is you know anti-homosexuality is a way that they try to get christians on their side um they come at you know with these very um socially conservative aspects that they share with Christians. Um, the most important thing to getting across to Christians is that the idolatry part, the Trinity part, um, focusing in on that. Now, there's a lot of Jews that will try to trick Christians and they'll say, well, it's not really idolatry or we don't consider it idolatry. And there's debate over whether or not it's idolatry. When I, they always, uh, They always will bring you to this point where it's like, there's rabbis that say it's idolatry and that we're going to be killed. But then there's rabbis who say it's not right. idolatry and we shouldn't be killed. And we're supposed, they actually, you know, they say this and they think that people, that you're just supposed to sit there and be like, okay, with Jews even deliberating over this. Like, right. why is this even a question? Right. Why are you even talking about this? You know, they think that they're going to calm people down by telling them that there's different perspectives on it. Yeah, but it's a uh, pill pull. It's confusion. It's obfuscation. It's a very, very typical, and I would even say coded, 
trick that Jews use to confuse people. Because if we're, if, if quote, Gentiles are, are just debating amongst themselves, what do the Jews mean? Then they can, you know, kind of walk around us and go forward to their goals. And this is a, something that is highly disturbing. Going back to what you were talking about, how Jews consider Gentiles, non-Jews, their property, Right there, I, that's at the very core of this whole thing. It's the concept that they perceive themselves as the, quote, chosen people, and that they were given everything and everyone in this world, at, you know, as their servants or their resources. We are their, you know, the goyim are their cattle. And if this point can be kind of, I, I feel maybe that could be the pivoting point from which everything else can come out because in you know western uh you know liberalism and 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 even conservatives uh, they have this sense of like well we're not your property we have this massive guilt trip about slavery and the this we're individualists and all this thing and and if gentiles only knew that we are thought of as property and that you know in their quote religion their you know god made us their property I think that would be an amazing place to start for this because I think, you know, you say that to anybody, uh, liberal or conservative, and they're going to raise an eyebrow and say, whoa, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's this kind of, uh, I don't know, I I think a lot of our viewers are aware of this, but I'm always trying to advocate for people who are new to this topic. Uh, That must be a very shocking notion. Um, I don't want to interrupt you, though. I know you have a lot more to talk about, but I'm interested in learning about your activism as well and and what your experiences have been in terms of enlightening people to this problem. Um, Yeah, just to add to what you say, when you get into, if you go on, um, you know, my blog, let me just, it's stopnoahidelaw.blogspot.com. There's Mm -hmm. a truncated version of that that is more sleek and clean to show politicians, which is Law. Dot com and then I have the new political cartoon Noah Hyde political cartoon uh, Noah Hyde but go to stop Noah Hyde law dot blogspot dot com and look around on there and um, you will find articles where in regards to these Noah Hyde laws so it's interesting there are people in this world that agree with these Noah Hyde laws and want to follow the Jews as a hereditary priesthood, and they're called Noahides. So there's actually people who willingly submit to this system. And they go before the Jews, and they have to pledge that the Jews are a hereditary priesthood who cannot be questioned, who Mm -hmm. are here to enlighten the nations about the Noahide laws. And these people are so self-debasing they say that that Jews have five souls, five levels to their souls. Non-Jews have three. Non-Jews are animalistic. Yeah. We cannot get out of our animalistic spirit without help from the Jews. So, I mean, it, it's definitely that kind of, you know, human-animal um, dichotomy or relationship yeah. is part of these Noahide laws. It's so dark. Um I, I'm not an expert on Islam, but what I do know of Islam, there's there's so much of this human as property mentality. I think of Islam more as an, a political ideology wrapped in a religion, and the the combination of the two are absolutely lethal. But in this case, you know, you look at an other, another Semite people, the Jews, and I think of them as the smarter Muslims, the the more clever yes. ones, the ones yeah. that are much better at lying and tricking people. That and, and rather than using violence, they use these other kinds of strategies, like you know, it, putting their people in our governments, in our media, in our entertainment, in our schools, education, etc., and then eating, rotting out uh, our countries from the inside. It's it's really really sick and diabolical almost worse frankly much worse i'd say frankly than than someone who runs at you with a sword you know and then what what they're doing is they are creating the problem and noah hyde law is the solution so <laughs> they they yeah. create the problem what's very interesting is that everyone always accuses the jews 
of um, trying to mix all the races and mix all the cultures until yeah. it's kind of this one uniform uh, people all across the world who are cultureless yeah. and that stuff. But with these Noahide laws, if you go into what they're doing, they're very clever in that um, they have this program called the 70 Gates. Now, supposedly out of Noah came 70 nations. Um, these are different ethnicities, different religions, different tribes, um, different nationalities. And the way it's supposed to work is that all the different cultures and nations of the world are supposed to adopt the Noahide laws, but they're supposed to have their own unique culture upon which the Jews can feed. So basically, you know, you want different cultures making different kinds of technology, different kinds of food, different kinds of clothing or whatever it is that they're doing that's unique. Mm -hmm. But the Jews are now coming out and they're saying, oh, the New World Order is all this mixed race, mixed ethnicity, mixed up world. And we're here to save you with the 70 gates because under the Noahide laws, you're all going to have your own nations. The only thing is that you have to follow Noahide law, but you'll have your own culture, you'll have your own language, and they're they're posing Noahide law as as the as the uh, uh, solution to the New World Order. So uh, they're doing that with a lot of things. Whatever they're doing, they're going in and they make the problem and the Noahide law is the solution. And that's why a lot of people say, you know, people are saying that a lot of Christians and there are a lot of Christians that are becoming Noahide a lot, um, that they're just going to gobble this up because, you know, uh, you know, I guess, you know, the abortion, the homosexuality, yeah. whatever it is they don't like going on in society, mm -hmm. this, they promise to come in and wipe it out, right? Yeah. That's what they're promising. And it will sound um, enticing. Right. Uh, I think that, again, people in our sphere are, are very acutely aware of how the Jews play both sides of the coin. They've got their people in the Republican Party. They've got their people in the Democrat Party. They create a, you know, think of 9-11 as the classic example of creating a problem to, you know, make America go to war in the Middle East so they have, you know, gradual hegemony in, in the region, etc. So <laughs> these things would be very shocking to a, a quote normie you know, but to the rest of us, this is just common knowledge. And so it, I think that the, it, it's important, obviously, to know the no hide laws, the whole deal. But I feel equally, if not maybe more important, is knowing how to protect our people, to protect Western civilization. And it seems like Christians always are the first ones to uh, like, like run towards their own suicide. They, they run towards their own enslavement. And, and so that, that's a, a really difficult and tricky question. Um, part of that has to do obviously with just the, the uh, how do I say, like being doped up on modern life, you know, uh, the, 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 the job that doesn't pay the bills and, you know, beer drinking and sports and, and all, all the things we do to run away from reality. The, uh, the inability to have logical uh, debate where you know, people aren't flying off the handle and, and losing friendships and these kinds of things. We're, we're just completely scattered and it's extraordinarily dangerous. And every time we, we fight amongst ourselves, we're allowing the enemy to take more and more ground. So this, I, I, that's where I'm you know, really interested in, in learning you're on the front line on this stuff. You put your, yourself out there. You've done a fantastic job with your websites. Um, uh, congratulations with this really cool cartooning. And I hope that takes off as well. I want to recommend everybody order a cartoon or at least enjoy the, the, you know, the artwork and the various things that you're doing. But the question is, how do we strategize to enlighten our people? You know, how, what, what can we do to get people to, to wake up? There's such a, a profoundly, especially today, we have this whole fake uh, white supremacist uh, boogeyman 
narrative happening in, in, in the news, the mainstream news. And it all, you know, goes back to sort of World War II and, the, you know, you know, the drill. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do we work through that? How do we get through that? Um, it's going into officialdom. So what I see going on a lot in this community is that there's very little done in officialdom. It's all online and unfortunately a lot of it is, is just trolling and shit posting and things mm -hmm. like that there's very little anything that anyone's doing in officialdom but this gives us the ability so those laws that we talked about those public laws that 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 recognize the Noah Hyde laws those can be repealed um i have if you go to the stopnoahydelaw.blogspot.com on top yep. of every um, page is a, a link to a, a petition to have these laws removed, which you can sign. And I not only ask you to sign them, but I ask you to sign, send it to your politician as well, mm -hmm. asking them to do something about this. Um, the other place that these can be repealed are in the United Nations because the United Nations recognize them. The Vatican has officially recognized them. They could be repealed there. Um, mm -hmm. There are movements within islam to have sharia and the noahide blend together into one the jews and the muslims are working together to make sharia noahide compliant and what i always am telling people is that they will use sharia in the beginning sharia is is basically noahide it's not perfect noahide they're not going to be using sharia forever but uh, I think a big plan is to use Islam as to to level the playing field. And then once they've done that, then, you know, they'll use Noahide law. Um, but they're working in tandem with them. It's it's in UK textbooks. They're mm -hmm. talking about the Noahide laws in the UK textbooks and mm -hmm. spreading propaganda so it can be taken out of there. Um, they're trying to get it passed in Australia, so they're official. It, it's time to get off the internet and to start getting into the the corridors of power. And this is something that's actually, look, the Jews are not going to just let these laws be repealed in no. America. No. If we go and we make a big, huge problem of this and we say we want these laws repealed, they're going to come out against us. Exactly. And this will expose them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yes. So officialdom is where it needs to be taken and, and they have set it up so that we have an in into going into officialdom. Jesus. Oh, that's, 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 that's just, uh, you know, that's chilling. It's disturbing as hell. Um, I have seen your, your blog spot before. I, I just kind of ran across it in my studies on Noahide law. I, I don't really know anybody out there who's doing quite as much as you. So, you know, hats off to you. Congratulations on, you know, all the things that you're doing for our people. I guess I really want to call on the audience to get involved in this, to start putting this front and center. Um, there's a lot of issues. People are, are very disenchanted right now, you know, with the fake presidency and et cetera. But the fight is, is far from over. If anything, we have to fight harder now. So we have to fight by knowing what to do. And that's the number one problem. Nobody knows what to do. We, we, we can talk and talk and, and complain and shit post, et cetera, like you said. But there's this massive, uh, I don't know, confusion, you know, a malaise that, that is uh, holding us down. So you're saying essentially find out what these things are and call for the repeal of these laws in these different institutions. So interestingly, I, I like what you're saying that once we do that, and then, you know, you see the Jews will come out and protest against it in a sense that that is, you're saying that's going to kind of pull the mask off and expose them. Yeah. Yes, it will. And, um, they have a lot of deceptions going on about this. Um, look, I can tell I've been doing this for a long time. They don't want to talk about this. They sure. don't they they don't want to respond too much very often because they're scared and because they know if they get into it, it's just gonna snowball and people are gonna start asking more questions. Yeah, yeah. They do have deceptions lined up. Okay. Um they Subject. do 
they have they do have deceptions lined up and um they have a few of them mm -hmm. that they're armed with um i talk about that a lot on my website and other uh podcasts that i go on one of them is called the Sh i call it shatuf there's this shatuf deception mm -hmm. where they tell you that um your religion particularly christianity they tell you well it's not quite monotheism but it's not polytheism either and it's acceptable for gentiles to practice it not for jews but if you're a gentile it's it's permissible for you to practice it so you don't need to worry about this that christianity is not idolatry it's shatuf and you're you know no one's going to be beheading you or persecuting you or anything like that and that's all nonsense i mean this mm -hmm. it's it's it, you know they or or that it only applies in Israel or that only applies in the messianic age yeah um lots of deceptions going on but yeah, they're, once they're you just, okay I'm sorry to interrupt you yeah I, no, I, I'm, once you get around those five or six yeah. um you know once you're armed against them you can really start um you can really start penetrating them what I'm noticing among Christians is they seem to need validation from Jews there's the the quote Judeo Christian values, you know that this thing, this is a, a term that people keep trying to push into the narrative, and you know I know that there's different kinds of Christians, of course Orthodox, etc. Um, but the problem is this this uh, this sense that Christians need to defend Jews and that Jews uh, or Judaism, let's say, validates their Christianity. And I, I think this we're probably talking about people who probably have a shallow understanding of, of Christianity, but yet consider themselves Christians. I, I, I can't really call that, but I'm these are my observations. And yeah, so like, you know, what is your advice to Christians specifically through the lens of their faith, how to approach this issue and, and, and you know, the deception of Jews and the problem of Noahide? Well, um, I it's would a difficult question. I would ask them to think that many Christians are waiting for a one world government, one world religion that's going to take over everything and that it's going to be deceptive, that people are going to want to become part of this, um, that and that in Revelations, it talks about that this one world religion will eventually lead to beheadings. Um, I want them to see these Noahide laws and I want them to see people converting to it, uh, becoming part of it, nations accepting it and it becoming, if this is it, this is the one world religion that you have been looking for. Mm -hmm. This is the system the you know, the beast system that you've been waiting for this yeah. is it this is what people are going to be you know they talk about the the what's going to be happening the great deception that many people are going to fall away okay. that they're going to be taken in by yeah. by something right they're going to yeah. they're allow what what would take christians in it's not going to be uh voodoo you know it's not going yeah. to be yeah. It's not going to be the new age, okay? Christians yeah, yeah. are not going to be falling into the new age. So They're going to be falling into the Noahide laws. It's the, the tribulation, I guess. It's the period of time of suffering in hell on earth before the second coming. Is that what you're, you're calling it? Well, that would eventually happen. I think that at, fee, at first... It's going well at first. They're right now. They're making it look peaceful and good and happy, and um, that's going to be that deception that everyone is looking for. the The great apostasy is what they call it, right? Where people leave the church, um, and it's going to look good. But that the then the great tribulation is where the Noahide laws then they show their real face. And the beheading start, and you know that would be the great tribulation. But before that, it's it's this is it. They are working to blend the Vatican and Islam. They are um, inter 
interjecting themselves into the church and getting Christian pastors to accept the Noahide laws. Hebrew mm -hmm. roots is a really big part of this. You know, these people that want to go back to the Old Testament yeah. and now they're saying the Noahide laws are good. Um, it's something that was really quiet for a long time. More and more people are starting to hear about it. Go online, go on YouTube. You'll find Noahides. Oh, you'll sure. find a lot of people who used to be Christian that have become Noahides. Yeah. And that's it. That's the one world religion you're looking for. Mm, which is, <laughs> when you say you're looking for, you're saying, you mean identifying the evil. Yes. I, well, you know, the, in the prophecy, everyone, mm. everyone's talking about the one world government, the one world religion. Over in Israel, uh -huh. they have the unofficial Sanhedrin who is looking to replace the United Nations and guide the world in biblical right. law. Now, so, it, I, again, I'm not a biblical scholar, but is this was this kind of coded into the Bible from the beginning? Is this been um, a long, it's we, definitely we, coded into what do you mean was Noahide law coded into the Bible? I guess I, I guess I'm gonna well, say yes because I'm there's a theory out there essentially that Christianity is essentially a Jewish psyop that it, it's a it's a way to subjugate European peoples and you know, it, it's a you know turn the other cheek and you know become a martyr and this whole kind of uh, pacifying religion. It's not anything like, the, say, the old Germanic uh, or Viking ways, you know, where you're you, the, the, the kind of the, the power that Europeans have. And uh, I, I'm not sure that I know that that's true or not, but I wanted to kind of get your take on that. Does it seem that there's something about Christianity itself that was constructed by Jews in order to subjugate Christians? And then this is the culmination of that. Well, okay, there's two things about that. There are rabbis out there who say that Christianity came to pave the way for the Noahide laws because even though Christianity is considered idolatry, it is probably the least worse form of idolatry. And so Christianity wiped out what what we really consider idolatry, like the statues and the pagan. Well, it should be pagan religions, essentially. Yes, it, it got rid of all of that. And of course, Christianity is much closer to the Noahide laws than anything right. else. The, so there's the, rabbis that say that this was sent by God. Christianity was sent by God to mm. clear the way for the Noahide. My biggest problem is that Christians are waiting for this one world government to come over, take over, and behead everyone. Um, I think that if you're waiting for that to happen, I mean, you're you're not your your will to resist it because you think it's God. You think that this is prophecy coming true. Like you know, I I don't really like a lot of Christians that I talk to about this. They're very worried. They're very concerned. Um, they you know they do want to get it, but a lot of them are very resolved. Like. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the end. Here comes the prophecy. Yeah. It's coming true. Yeah. And yeah. and um, I think it can make them. It can disarm them in a way yeah. that they don't that they don't fight it nearly as hard as they need to. Now, the interesting thing is that the vast majority of people that are interested in my work are Christians. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that Christians are the least capable of thwarting this plot i think that you know we need to get other people on the other side of the coin mm. i think that they're less interested um mm -hmm. but i think that they have more of the will to thwart this mm -hmm. Th this this opens up a <laughs> a kind of a can of worms the first thing i want to say is uh the separation of church and state and this is something baked into the Constitution and, and the American way. And I think that this is on, on a sort of on a legal and governmental basis where, you know, where we can maybe fight this battle. If, the, if we're essentially saying the Constitution provides for a separation of church and state, therefore, no theocracy can supersede our law. You cannot just kind of arbitrarily 
determine yourself to be the police of the world under your 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 so-called religion. You know, I, what kind of religion enslaves people and beheads people? If that is true, then maybe your God is the devil. You know, that these are questions that are, are pretty clear and, and obvious. So I think these are the, the questions and, that we maybe want to bring up to people who want to fight against um, Noahide law. I think there's also an interesting point where we might um, we might be able to create, how do I say this, uh, some kind of an alliance or a partnership with other religions. You know, what, what about Buddhists and Hindus and, and XYZ PDQ, anybody else who is not within the Abrahamic uh, triad, if you would. You know, uh, in the West, we, we see the whole world through this kind of Judaism, Islam, Christianity, this, this kind of lens, but there's like millions of other billions of other people that don't belong to that paradigm. They don't even understand that paradigm. Right. So if this is a so-called global law, right, that uh, one world religion, one, one world law, then what about everybody in say Asia, for example, you know, you know, you'd, you'd think that they would want to get behind the pushback on this and to say, no, you, you know, this, this tiny land space in the, you know, in the Middle East doesn't rule the world. We're not going to be overcome by this. So I don't know. Do you, I, I'm really just kind of well, well, brainstorming um, I, on this. Well, I want to answer that, but the first thing I want to answer is you were talking about separation of church and state. Mm. They are gaining a lot of control over language here in the law, in what the government, uh, how the government defines things. So there was a question at the United Nations. Someone asked the question, how did you get this law passed because there's separation of church and state? And these sentiments obviously the, these this language breaks those sentiments. Mm. Mm. Noahide law, they had Noahide law defined as education, not religion. <laughs> they they when in American law now, in American proclamation, education is a pillar of the Noahide law. So they talk about education a lot. And when they're saying education, they mean Noahide law. So that's how they're tweaking language in order to get this in and away from the separation of church and state. And it is interesting that you bring that up because I just so happened to be a Hindu. I converted to Hinduism many years ago. And um, I work in that community with these Noahide laws, and they are the other people besides um, anti-Zionist Christians. I've had a lot of um, success in that community, awesome. um, particularly because they're very sensitive to conversions. Mm -hmm. And there are conversion programs in, in, in India right now, and it is backed by the Israeli government. So the Israeli government is behind converting people to this Noahidism, and it's part of their government policy to do right. this. And they they want people to be connected to Zionism through these Noahide laws. Right, right. And Zionism is essentially, it, it's funny because with, with the Jews, there's many masks, like you were talking about the, the manipulation of language in law, you know, calling Noahide, quote, education rather than Noahide, right? Uh, so Democrat, you pull the mask off, uh, it's, uh, say, re progressive. You pull that mask off, you would have maybe socialist. Pull that mask off, you're going to start getting to things like Marxist and, and globalist. And behind it all, you know, the last mask is, or the last face, if you will, is Zionism, Jewish global rule, total hegemony over the earth. And so this is a long, slow civilizational battle. And, you know, it, information is, is obviously extraordinarily important on this. Uh, clear language, having a way somehow to cut through the BS, cut through the lies, and just say it for what it is, call it out for what it is, make people extraordinarily clear on what it is. And, you know, I guess this is why I, I want to have you on the show. This is why I, I demand everybody watching this show share this, 
get this word out. This is no joke. This is some heavy duty stuff. It's already uh, during the Obama administration, he legalized beheadings as a form of uh, execution. This is, you know, as you're saying, these things are already underway. And here we are, we're just talking about it. You know, meanwhile, there's probably, you know, millions and millions of dollars behind this. The Vatican's connected to it. It's uh, it's disturbing as hell. So it's the kind of thing that people have to actually do something about. So I'd say go to your, your blog spot again, stopnohidelaw.com and, or .blogspot.com. These are really, really important things. Um, did you want to talk about Noahide Gate a little bit and maybe go through some of the, the content there? Yeah, sure. I can. Let me try to. I can uh, show some of those cartoons, actually. Let me. The uh, Vatican Noahide Pact, Noahide Subversion of Black Lives Matter, and the Silent Muslim Noahide Alliance. These are the three that I see there. Yeah, there's. Uh, hold on. Let me. Let me just. Uh... I like the the main image of this sort of skull octopus with his arms around the world, and then each arm representing uh, different different aspects of Noahide law. U.S. government, Islam, Sharia, Israeli Zionism, Christian Zionism, Freemasonry, Noahide converts, which you just spoke about, United Nations, and the Vatican. These are yeah. There you go. Thank you. So. You can see it now. You can see yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we just kind of touched on this. Like you said, mm -hmm. um, this obviously comes from the very stereotypical propaganda where you see, you know, it's usually a Jewish octopus. Yeah, yeah. You know, taking over the world. But, uh, you know, we um, changed it a little and made it about Noahide law. So yeah. it's many tentacles. Like we talked a little bit about the Vatican. The Vatican has uh, said that the Noahide laws are incumbent upon all humanity. Oh, so is the United Nations. Again, we talked about those people who actually convert to these Noahide laws and call themselves animals, insane. which is just insane. Yes. Uh, we didn't get into Freemasonry. Freemasonry is connected to this. If you go, I'm about to... Um, Freemasonry and the Noahides are now trying to deny this, but it's undeniable that Freemasonry is a Noahide plot. It was in their constitutions. It's written everywhere throughout their their articles, and their it, it's it's everywhere that they believe in this. Of mm. course, there's the Christian Zionists who, um, the Christian Zionists are really weird in that I don't think that they necessarily want people becoming Noahides, but they really don't want you being against it. They don't want you really talk. I have met or I've seen on the internet Christians that said even talking about the Noahide laws is anti-Semitic, just to bring it up, just to talk about it. See, just to say the word Jew in public is anti-Semitic, it's... it's our people are so insanely brainwashed that to 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 want to even have a discussion and, and to even question what's going on is is like sends them into terror you know um this whole i'm not a nazi bullshit is is it's it's just childish it's insanely anti intellectual and uh and actually that does bring up a bit of a side topic that i wanted to ask you about I, I don't know how to phrase this, but there's, I think that in anytime you're talking about a, a group of people, a demographic, a race, uh, a religion, there's the, you know, how do I, there's this notion like, well, they're not all bad, you know, and you always hear that as the comeback. Anytime you're trying to say, look, you know, uh, this group of people is doing this thing against us and we need to address it. And then the first thing you hear, well, they're not all bad. And I can't really, I, I, I generally agree with that. I think that there's probably, uh, you know, I, I understand that, for example, um, Orthodox Jews are anti-Zionist and they've done, you know, a lot of, of protests on these things, but naturally they don't get covered in the news or things like that. Is there, what, what's, what's your take on that? Are there Jews yeah, that are against I, this? Yes, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I can tell you right now, there's and those Orthodox Jews that are anti-Zionist are still pro-Noahide. Um, uh, they're still pro-Noahide. I've 
talked with them and I've gone to their protests and spoken to them and they are into the Noahide laws. Look, I've done this a lot, a long time. I've spoken to a lot of Jews. Yeah. They're either for it or they are subtly going to try to find a way to make you not want to think about it or talk about it. Yeah. Look, this is how this is how I judge Jews. If you are not completely and totally against this, if you are anything but absolutely not, then no, you're you're not good in my book. And I can tell you that I have spoken to I have met only two Jews that have told me, nope, absolutely not. This is wrong. Get rid of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If Would they're you say not- they were were they secular Jews, like non practicing yeah, Jews? Yeah, they were secular Jews. But yeah. the vast majority of Jews are silent, don't want to talk about it, are neutral, are positive. Uh, and, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, you'll find, like, well, you know, nobody's being beheaded. Don't you think it's a little bit uh, far fetched to be thinking yeah. like this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, they're going to start getting into that kind of stuff. Right. They make you look like you're a conspiracy theorist or something. Yes, exactly. That and the vast majority of Jews, in my opinion, are going to they're not not all of them are gonna be like, Yes, we're here for the Noahide laws and we want these implemented, but Mm -hmm. they're not look, Jews scream about everything, you know, these very liberal secular Jews. If this said canon law. If these laws in America said canon law rather than Noahide law, the Jews would be having a fit. They mm-hmm. would never allow this to sit on mm-hmm. on the books like that. They would have an absolute conniption. Mm-hmm. And 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 but the fact that you know when it comes to this, they're lackadaisical. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a big deal. Look the other way. You know, it, it's just another another method. So so they are complicit. So, you know, like if I know that somebody is robbing somebody else and I don't do anything about it, I'm complicit. And that that's a light example. But as I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, imagine if tomorrow on, say, CNN News, headline news, uh, breaking news today, ladies and gentlemen, Christians are now beheading people who break the Ten Commandments. And it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to become global law that Christians will have hegemony over the world and that they will, you know, kill people for not following Christianity. <laughs> you know, I mean, that that right there, that frame right there, put the shoe on the other foot. What if Christians were acting like Jews in this manner, if they had these kind of global take over plots. You know, I, I know, of course, Christians want to convert people and they think they're doing the right thing, etc. But they won't kill them to do it. And maybe they did do that in the past. In some cases, still, it's nowhere near the level of, of, of true globalism that it is now. The Vatican, the UN, Freemasonry, uh, you know, it's U.S. government, we could go on and on. Fifty percent of our Congress have dual citizenship with Israel. Uh, how is that even possible? Right. So I think this could be a good strategy is to say, well, let's put the shoe on the other foot. If Christians were, you know, just arbitrarily saying, OK, we are now the law and, and we're actually going to kill you. They would right off the bat say, oh, well, that sounds like Islam, you know, and I'm like, well, then how is Islam and Judaism different? You know, and and so like let that sink in a bit. I think this is people have to kind of use some imagination and and not get caught up in the the weeds, so to speak, of all this uh, this other stuff. But anyway, um, I wanted to ask you specifically about Freemasonry. Uh, can you describe what is Freemasonry and how does it operate as a uh, a tentacle in this uh, global takeover of Noahide laws? Well, when you look at a lot of Jewish sources, Jews are very open about how Freemasonry is based upon a lot of Jewish mysticism, the Kabbalah. We know it goes back to Solomon's Temple. That's what it surrounds. They're interested in rebuilding Solomon's Temple. And a lot of Freemasons also make this connection that, that you know, all of Jewish mysticism really... Um, Freemasonry is really based on a lot of Jewish mysticism. Um, 
but they have explicitly i mean okay the noahide laws were in the 1738 constitution of the grand lodge of england where it said that you had to follow the noahide laws um mm. they try to now be like oh that was just a mistake you know we didn't really mean that the person who inserted that had no authority like like freemasonry uh, such an organized society we just let something like that pass, like, you know what I mean? Oh, it's nothing, you know what I mean? Uh, but it, in a lot of other places, they describe themselves as Freemasons, I, I mean, as as Noahides. So, the, I mean, they're, they're part of the agenda. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, and that, once again, is another mask, as I would call it. It's another... Uh, kind of, you know, it looks like it's this on the outside. A friend of mine was like, oh, I'm thinking about joining the, you know, the, the Masons and, oh, you know, we do uh, community work. <laughs> and then, you know, then there's the conspiracy theory shows where they talk about the secret handshakes and something. And I, I wonder about the founding fathers of America and their relationship to uh, Freemasonry. Do you know anything about that? Um. I know a lot of them were Freemasons. Um, Freemasons admit that there's always been lots of collaboration between Jews and Freemasons. Um, Is it a Christian Zionism? Would you call it that? I mean, did the founding fathers think of America as as some kind of a key uh, piece of the puzzle? for this new world order that they're trying to institute? Well, Freemasonry is not Christian, and because it's Noahide, Freemasonry, from what I understand, rejects the Trinity. So uh, it rejects the Trinity so that it's Noahide compliant. Mm. Um, whether, well, when was this, this country was made in 1776, right? Wait, so they knew that they were Noahides, it was officially part of their constitution in 1738. So these Freemasons, yeah, that was the grand, the, I mean, everyone knows about the Grand Lodge of England, and that's where everything comes out of. So, I mean, they must have known that they were Noahides. I'm sure that they knew about this and, and that it was probably part of the plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've come across that idea before, and I wanted to get your, your take on it. Um, so something very interesting on your site here is you have something regarding uh, Black Lives Matter and how, how uh, Noahide law relates to that. They seem totally different uh, yes. in terms of theme and content. And, you know, could you help us see the connection between these things? Yeah, sure. Well, let me bring that picture up. If you can see that. Yeah. So um, in the cartoon, yeah. you have one side, you know, holding the blacks and telling them, you know, white Christians have denied you justice and they're racist, etc. The other side, you have the, the Jews uh, saying, you know, all oh, Black Lives Matter is anti-Christian and uh, blah, blah, blah. You need Noahide law to protect you. OK, so what they're doing. OK, remember how they're trying to control um, the word education? Mm hmm. They're trying to control and transform the word justice. So mm. the the seventh law is to institute courts of justice, or sometimes mm. it's just said to enact justice. So what they're doing is they're going to the Black Lives Matter, and they're telling them that you have been denied justice, and that is one of the Noahide laws. And, and obviously, okay— if you're being denied justice, mm -hmm. you need to enact the Noahide laws to get justice. You're the 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 host society is guilty of not upholding justice according to these Jews. Mm -hmm. This is what they're telling Black Lives Matter. Yeah. I have on record a Jew saying that um what would you know the idea would be to get blacks to the Black Lives Matters to set up Noahide tribunals oh, and God. that the ruling of these Noahide tribunals could be violence. Oh, um, but now on the other side, Jews are going to Christians and they're saying, well, Black Lives Matters are looters, the Noahide laws against theft, they're anti-Christian, they're anti-white, 
So you need the Noahide laws to kind of protect you. They're they're playing both sides of the just field like there. Always. Just like always, yeah. Um, th this ties back into critical race theory where equality is now what they call equity, and that means equal outcome. Therefore, you know, we have to uh, block whites and Asians from Yale University because blacks and, and browns, whatever, can't don't have a chance to compete against their higher IQs. And so we must level the playing field in the communist manner, you know, and have equal outcomes. So this is all part of this twisted worldview that's anti-Western. Um, I think I, I really, how do I say, when uh, in the last several years when Black Lives Matter came up and became, you know, mainstream news, et cetera, and a, a major, major issue, I was always looking for African Americans to talk to about this in a sensible way and then to show them that uh, sitting on the board of Black Lives Matter is a Jewish woman who whose name escapes me right now, but she was in jail for bombing, I think, the Capitol building and Bill Clinton uh, pardoned her and that, you know, the, the, the female, the women, the uh, black feminists that run uh, Black Lives Matter have are on camera saying we are trained Marxists, you know, and yeah. you know when when the these people say it out of their own mouths, you know, and these truths are are, are plain, then you know it it causes a lot of cognitive dissonance in the African American community because they they get this vague sense of wait a minute what we're being played, you know, but the the thing is they're they're made to be so angry. And, you know, this anger is, is, is such an easy tool for Marxists to use, to weaponize uh, the idea that, um, you know, these, the so-called uh, January 6th attack on the Capitol, uh, which is total bullshit, um, is, is domestic terrorism. Meanwhile, totally ignoring how many years of Black Lives Matter and Antifa, which I consider one organization, uh, you know, killing people, looting, smashing, burning, all that. That's how, how is that not, you know, clearly domestic terrorism? So we're living in an occupied government right now. And these things are, are right at our doorstep right now, which is why, again, I'm, I'm, I'm strongly in the strongest sense that I can urging people to share this information to organize, to get out there the best that we can. And we have to first understand these things, be aware of the, uh, the, the lies and the trickery. This is a game, you know, we're, we're, you know, and once you're shown like, well, I'm against Noah high law and these are the reasons why, and you expose it, be able to also kind of be ready to, you know, kind of show the two sides of these things. So if everybody were as knowledgeable, you know, as Vincent, that, that'd be fantastic. That's, I think the goal is to get everybody up to his level. Yeah. yeah and I, I think I, with the, uh, with Black Lives Matter, it's very important to get them aware of this, that they are being played and used. Mm -hmm. I think that that might upset them, you know, mm. Yeah, I think I, it might upset them and they might uh, buck this because the Orthodox Jews are going into these Black Lives Matter rallies and they're talking about setting up Noahide courts. It's disgusting. And uh, I, the thought of that is it just makes me shiver. I think about uh, high IQ blacks like Candace Owens and uh, the various other people in that area, um, Jesse Lee Peters and you know, his show. Um, it seems like to me like we need to reach out to them with this information and help them to mainstream it to their audiences. They they are far more high profile than I am. They're kind of in the normie Republican uh, area, I guess, if you will. And um, you know, maybe they, they can start having uh, some impact on that as well, because essentially this is the deal. The, the Jews want a race war. That in Russia, you didn't have blacks and whites and Latinos and Asians. You just had Russians. So you had a class war. That's the heart of communism, divide and conquer. This nation is extraordinarily divided, more so than it ever has been. Meanwhile, millions of, of immigrants are expected to come in. It 
I mean, we're literally, you know, hanging off the cliff right now as a nation. So that's why these things couldn't be more, you know, important. And it's very, it's just a message I'm trying to get across here. So, but so you, you've got a screen up here, the Silent Muslim Noahide Alliance. What's this all about? Yeah, well, that was that, um, that they're trying to blend Noahide and Sharia. So the 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 Jews are telling Muslims that that their Sharia they can practice that under the Noahide law, and that they're Noahide compliant. So it's like go forth and practice Islam, and we're in alliance with you. But at the same time, with they're going to the other side, and they're saying, well. Are you're worried about Noahide law? We're not beheading anyone. It's these Muslims that are beheading people. That's what you need to worry about. So again, they're playing they're playing both sides of the fence. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's <laughs> the level of of evil to this is is just staggering. You know, I just I'm I'm kind of stuttering thinking about it. You know, um, so that that brings up an interesting discussion of how say, uh, you know, mainstream Americans might interface with Muslims about this and say, you know, what's going on? Now, I, I'll just state for the record, Islam has no place in the West. Uh, it, you know, I don't want to say that. I, obviously, they have no ill will against anybody of any race or religion, but it cannot mix with Western values. And I think I'll just stop at that. But since we are living integrated right now together, you if if I were to go to Muslims and say these things, do you think they would look at me and go, hmm, should I side with the Jew or should I side with the white man? What's better for me? What do you well, think a Muslim would say? The thing is that I try to bring up to them, and I talk about this on the websites, is they're just using the Muslims because, okay, when you go and they're doing this with everyone, where they're going them and they're telling, well, your religion is fine. Don't worry about it. When you look deeper, Maimonides, who was a very who is one of the most respected Jewish scholars, said that even okay, this is what they're this is what it is. Christianity is definitely idolatry because of the Trinity. Islam doesn't have the Trinity, so it's not classified as idolatry. But that you're still not allowed to practice it under under true Noahide law. You have to be a pure Noahide. You cannot be making up your own holidays or anything like that. You're not allowed to make up your own holidays. Muslims have made up their own holidays. You can't make up your own rules mm. or anything. And then there are there are rabbis that say Islam is idolatry. So it's okay. it's just they're just using them temporarily, but they're going to get rid of them when they're done with them. But I can tell you right now, I know Muslims that are pro Noahide. Mm. There there's it's a growing number of so them. They they fell for it. They've been tricked, is what you're yes. saying. Yes. See, this is the thing about it. It's you know, you have this small country in the Middle East that believes it owns the world and everyone in it and its method of doing that is to get us to all fight each other and you know i'm i'm very sure that you know everybody would really rather just be left alone you know that nobody wants wars in the middle east nobody you know other than of course the jews and and you know who want us to you know shed our blood so they can have the uh, the greater israel project and these kinds of things so it's uh, it's harsh this is harsh um, we do have to think in terms of how can we talk to, how can we interface with Muslims? How can we interface with blacks, uh, Asians, Indians, you know, et cetera, et cetera, in a way where we're all very different and we all have our own interests and we compete uh, for, for resources, et cetera. But yet, in a sense, we actually all have this one common enemy, which is Noahide. And so... It seems like that that could be a whole new discussion, a whole new take, a sort of a global uh, conversation on why this is bad for every nation. So I don't know. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, that's that's what I've been trying to do. I, so I'm trying to get every single um, element here. So anyone who's an idolater, Hindu, Buddhist, mm -hmm. um pagans christians mm -hmm. you know anyone that's considered idolatrous this is something that you want to talk atheists 
no blasphemy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and like yeah. atheists would be it's, interested. Interesting. What you're saying, what you're saying is basically Jews consider not being a Jew against the law, <laughs> and not, then, not being a Noahide, not not okay. not seeing them as the hereditary priesthood who oh. are here to okay. show us the light, and okay. not wanting. Well, I mean, I, they're they are going to make, and I've met Jews that have said this, and I'm sure that they're soon going to say that anti-Noahidism is anti-Semitism. There you so go, that's to even, to even oppose this is being anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have met Jews that have told that to me, that simply opposing Noahide law is anti-Semitic. Yeah, well, that's a twisted use of language and another form of lying and deception, which only makes them look and just really more guilty. Um, it's it's this stuff is so profoundly disturbing. In in a weird way, though, it, it could actually bind people who are very different and who have been enemies for a long time to come together and recognize this. This is actually the true global crisis that we're facing and you know if you can't point out and call out and talk about who's doing what and how it's going to hurt us quote anti-semitism you know and, and with huge quotes right as sarcastically um then there's no hope right so we have to use every resource that we have to get this information out and get people moving on it and across the board it's not just a white issue right it's it's everybody's issue now yeah mm -hmm. yes it's ever it's it's an issue for everyone and it's it's uh it's global and it really you're right it can bring people together i've had a lot of uh success with hindus i know that i mean i don't really have much connection with other uh asian like or east asian cultures or anything like that, but um, uh, I think that they that they would be very uh, receptive to an alliance on, you know, putting this to an end and saying that we have a, a common enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, it's I guess how I look at this or frame this is that it's not so much a person, but what they do, and and it's not so much maybe a group, but the, their ideology. You know, I, I'm, I'm very sure that there's all kinds of exceptions to the rule, but unfortunately, you know, the, there's something about the Jewish character and the Jewish culture, Jewish history, and obviously religion, that they're, they're paranoid, they're profoundly paranoid, they're, they're you know, 109 countries, whatever, the, uh, you know, celebrating, not celebrating, but remembering all the times that they had massacred, they've been massacred in history. They need their own country, they need their own destiny, sovereignty, whatever it is, but not at the expense of everybody else. We are not their cattle, right? We're not their slaves. And this notion of like willingly being a Noahide, if you will, is essentially self-enslavement. It's it's like yeah, kissing yeah. Their, their boots. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say other than it's very frustrating. Yeah, but, well, uh, I want to, yeah. if, wait till you meet a Noahide. These people yeah. are the most evil, duplicitous, mm -hmm. deceptive, disgusting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have never met people that are so vile mm. than these Noahides. They are truly vile people. Oh, I, mean, I mean, they they're they hate other religions and are very open about it i mean i've met noah hydra they're like yes i can't wait to be burning down crosses and burning down churches and all of this other kind of stuff and you know what i mean they're very i mean some of them are very but radical they'll, and they'll have the muslims do it though instead of them and then say oh look see you know and then just you, you know, recycle that back into their whole lying industry of you know playing both sides of things and you know, I, I'm hearing what you're saying. Um, very, very, very harsh stuff. Uh, very uh, difficult. I think it's going to be exquisitely painful for Christians to swallow this pill. Um, I, I, you know, I just, uh, I can't really fully sympathize with that. I feel as if 
they have to snap out of it. Whatever it is in their religion that makes them embrace Noah Hyatt or, or kind of be stupid and duped into it, they've got to wake up, grow up. They've got to figure it out. They've got to come to some kind of terms with this. Um, yeah, well, but if, I, I, go ahead. I would like to tell them that even, look, with all these Christian Zionists, a lot of them dislike Zionism, dislike Jews, but they're doing this for prophecy, right? Because the 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 Jews are supposed to go to Israel and the Antichrist is supposed to arrive and all of this needs to be in place. So a lot of them very disingenuously support Israel because not because they like Jews, but because yeah. they want the Messiah to come. Right. And uh, th they're doing the same thing with these Noahide laws a bit. And I'd like to tell them that, no, look, you're not, even if you believe that this is going to happen, you're just supposed to sit there and let it happen. You're not supposed to be helping it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, See, not I have a, to, a, you're not supposed to be there promoting it. And, sure. and, and when it comes to the Noahide, you know, that it just comes to shaming, like, oh, you're an anti-Semite. Mm -hmm. This is all ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Uh uh, you know, they, even though a lot of them do know that there are Christian Zionists out there that know very well that the Noahide laws are the one world religion that's coming. And they're still, they're just, because they're, they want the prophecy to come soon faster, yeah. come true faster. They, you know, they, they're yeah, playing yeah. games. Ugh, it's so frustrating. I have a, uh, a really, really close friend who, is a very, very hardcore Christian and a biblical scholar. And we have pretty intense discussions on this kind of stuff. Um, one thing he said to me, too, is like, keep fighting the good fight. Like, you know, the the, the tribulations or what have you uh, are, are horrendous and nobody should be wanting that to come. And there's been many times in history where people thought, oh, look, the prophecy, you know, it's, it's coming, so, da, 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 da. And it hasn't come yet. And so it might not come for, or ever, right? I mean, my personal view is it's all self-fulfilling prophecy. This is just a narrative that people have been kind of duped into. But, you know, I, I'm not saying that there aren't spiritual practices or that I don't have a relationship with God or there's not some validity or mysticism there, I, I can't speak on that. But what I can speak on is that, you know, Christians in some way or other are basically opening the door and letting the wolf in. And they have to, in some way, come to terms with this and stop, you know. So that that's kind of my message for now. Uh, among the other idea of, like, we need to work together with people of other cultures and religions and countries, etc., to say this is a the global crisis let's get to this to the root of it and pull it out and make sure that it never comes back yeah i think a big test is going to be in that you know a lot of these christian zionists say there's the dual covenant because i mean christians want to convert everyone except those christians that don't want to convert jews right like jews have a another out or they don't have go. to convert to be safe but the question is going to become how much are they going to tolerate their flock being taken away from them by the noahides are are noahide is that a dual covenant too do noahides get in you know without without any kind of because look if they if they say anything about these noahide conversions um they're gonna they're gonna you know go there it's going to go against the jews yeah so you know i think that and there are probably going to be christians that are going to just allow the noahides to evangelize without really trying to do anything about it or you know they if anyone else were evangelizing like muslims evangelize and christians are very worried about that right yeah, yeah. but um are they are they going to just let this slip by I think that that will be a really big test. Mm. It's heavy stuff, man. Very heavy. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time and thank the audience for their time. Um, I think that we're, we're really just kind of covering or touching the surface of this issue. And uh, I'd like to return to this again at some point and, 
you know, again, try to work to get the, the word out and, uh, you know, hopefully to stop this. So once again, um, your website is stopnoahidelaw.com, stopnoahide.blogspot.com, and then noahidegate.com. So, uh, of course, the links will be below. Um, there's a lot of good reading in there. And granted, it's not, you know, this harsh and uncomfortable stuff to look at, but I've, I've seen what Vincent has done. And uh, how many years have you been at this, Vincent? About seven or eight. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, do you know anybody else who's doing this? Uh, well, uh, other people touch on it. Adam, I've been on Adam Green's show on No More News. Great. Um, he does it. He does do it. There's Israeli News Live, which is two Christians that do it. Mm -hmm. um, um, they're probably the biggest ones that are also, I mean, they don't specialize in it, but mm -hmm. it, they, they sound the alarm about it. Great, great. Well, thank you so much for the hard work that you do and the risks that you take. Um, and once again, to the audience, please get involved. Thank you so much for your time and have a great evening. Thanks.